Welcome back to the Auto Obsessive Garage. On this exciting episode, we're actually going to start tearing into this show. So we've got some fun things lined up. I think we're going to go ahead and replace that temp sending unit first. That's causing our gauge not to read. Hopefully that takes care of that issue. While we're in there doing the temp sending unit, we're going to have full access because we're probably going to take the air intake off. So we'll have access to the throttle body. Let's go ahead and clean that up while we're in there. And then we'll move on and tackle some other things. We definitely got to take care of those outer tie rods, both passenger and driver side. Uh, the driver side's way more worn than the passenger, but let's go ahead and replace those while we're at it with factory Ford Motorcraft parts. And so it begins, tearing into this show. Can't wait to get it all up and running and the way it should be. So tune in guys, should be a fun episode. The first thing I want to troubleshoot is the coolant temperature sensor, the one that goes to the actual gauge in the car. Now it's pegged it cold all the time, doesn't move. So there is a sensor issue. Now to get to the sensor, it's a little challenging on this car. So these covers kind of just pop off. You'll find them connected. There's a couple little spots here. And then this one has a screw. The one over the throttle body just has a single screw. So that's pretty easy to remove. Get those out of the way. It's obvious they were trying to church up the uh, engine bay of this car. So little plastic covers here and there. The sensor itself is down in here and I'll try to get a better image for you, but it is pretty challenging to get to, so I'm trying to remove as much as I can here. Yep, that's it down in there. So we want to pull that off and then we're going to run some tests on it to see if the sensor is bad. You don't want to just replace sensors because nothing hurts more than having to buy parts that you don't need. I'm going to go ahead and remove the air box at this time too to create even more room. I think the best way to get to the sensor is not trying to go between the distributor and this coolant line and where the thermostat is. I think it might be actually going from back here. So let's just take the air box out and this hose that connects to the throttle body. This is a period when cars are a little more simpler. So just pop off the MAF uh, airflow sensor here. Two regular screwdriver clamps if you want to undo both sides. I'm probably just going to undo this one here. Pull it off of the throttle body. Woo! Old air filter. Glad I ordered a new one. That unit just pops right off. What's awesome is this is actually pretty solid rubber. It's not like hard plastic which would crack more over time so that's a good design cue. I see this old rubber lasts a lot longer than plastic under the hood. Yeah, boy, that's a 20 year old air filter. Oh, good, yep, yep. That's a good time to replace it. That sensor again is located right there. God, it's just, where the thermostat is on this car, it's just, you've got the neck coming out for the radiator, and then there's a bunch of other coolant, electrical lines. Obviously the distributor is right up against it. Oh, it's not, this is not an easy go, guys. All right, just pops off like most of these sensors remember guys they don't really screw in sometimes they'll have a clip but oftentimes there's kind of a pressure that you push on I'm gonna check the wire itself see if I see anything obvious no wire looks to be in good shape no exposed copper or anything uh, maybe I can clean the uh, connector in there but there's the sensor right there so we'll get a wrench on that and pull it out and we're just gonna try replacing it Anyway, you see the sensor right there. We're gonna get a wrench on, remove it. We'll run some tests, uh, resistance test and voltage test to see if the sensor is reading. Uh, it's a cheap sensor, it's like a $7 sensor, but still, let's just test so we can know it's not a wiring issue. Of course, make sure your drip pan's underneath. Now I noticed when I was removing this sensor, a big no-no. Let's pull it out of the socket here and I'll show you guys. Here's that temp gauge sending unit again. Uh, it looks pretty old, but again, this Teflon tape is, it's not a good idea to do, guys. I know, I get it. If you do any plumbing or water fixture, sure, it's great for that. But the problem is this really needs to have a good ground to the engine block. If that Teflon tape's on there really good or wound up or gunked up in there, sometimes it can mess with the ground and without a proper ground, this sensor really, really can't operate the gauge. So let's go ahead and replace that and see if it fixes the gauge problem we're having. Since we had to take the intake tube off to get to that coolant temp gauge sender, looked inside the throttle body, pretty nasty in there. So let's just give it a nice little cleaning. Put a rag underneath to catch any dripping. Cleaner. And then we'll go ahead and spray our throttle body cleaner in there while moving the butterfly valve open and shut. 
just oily film. It just builds up. There's nothing really to be super concerned with here. Try not to breathe this in. I just like to get in there with a cloth after and get all that out. Look at that, nice and dark. Boy, doesn't that look a lot cleaner, huh? Just a couple minutes to do that. It's a great value added when we're restoring an old power plant like this back to its glory. So, awesome. Little things that count, guys. So I'm gonna get in there with a pick and carefully remove all that extra Teflon tape. We definitely don't need that in there. We're all nicely cleaned up there. Let's go ahead and install the new unit. Let's go ahead and install this new temp sending unit for the Taurus SHO. I'm using a genuine Ford Motorcraft part, which I always recommend using the OEM factory parts for these kind of sending units, any of these kind of sensors. Not super complicated here, guys. Uh, single wire sensor basically just sends a signal to your temp gauge. Again, do not be tempted to use any kind of thread lock or Teflon tape here. This serves as the ground to the engine block, so you don't want to interfere with that. Also, very challenging to reach. It's definitely hard to get that thread started. You literally have no access room to this thing. It's, it's kind of nuts. Here's where you have to get creative when you're in a tight spot. I'm using two uh, six inch extensions on a 3 8 inch ratchet driver and then a swivel head to get down in there because you can't get a straight shot at this. You can kind of get a hand down there to keep it kind of together here. And just go ahead and tighten that thing in. You can see our shiny new sensor back in there now. What we'll do it this time is go ahead and reconnect that sensor wire. Sensor wire should be pretty straightforward. We should just have to pop it right on. And there's our new temp sending unit installed with the wire hooked up. Now we can put our air box back together here. Put our new air filter in. Got a new Wix air filter to drop in. Well, that's an issue. That's not even close to being the right air filter, is it? Gotta love it when that happens. So that one's getting returned. If you can look at the size difference here pretty substantial. So let's go ahead and make sure we get the right one. <laughs> We're under the driver's side wheel well, looking at that outer tie rod, which you can see right in front of us. Now these look like the OEM pieces, so probably gonna come off with quite a bit of force. Not a bad idea to hit it with some penetrating oil. Not a bad idea to do this a couple times and let it sit for a few hours before you do this. First things first, we're gonna go ahead and loosen this nut right here. Now this is gonna take a lot of force to get off, trust me. This has probably been sitting on there for a while in most instances, in this case, 30 years. So it's a good amount of time. So what you wanna do is get a wrench on there. And the whole idea here is this presses the outer control arm out and keeps the tightness here. So you kind of want to loosen it, but you're not actually loosening, you're actually tightening technically. So you want to move that nut towards the center of the car. And that sometimes takes more force, especially if your bushing can move like this on your outer tie rod. Also, like we talked about before when we showed you the issue in the first place, if you can move this with your hand, <laughs> I mean, you have gone way past the useful life expectancy of your outer tie rod there. So we got that bolt loose now. There we go. The next thing you don't wanna do is loosen this too much because that's our alignment. You know, when we put the new one on, given that it is an OEM replacement, it's gonna be pretty close to in alignment. So just don't snug it up, just loosen it a little bit and then tighten it so it's barely touching. It'll give us a good reference point when we install the new piece. Now it's time to remove this. Now on the new units, the uh, Motorcraft replacement unit, there is not a hole for this cotter pin here. So go ahead, we need to remove it anyway. Uh, if it's giving you a real, real pain in the ass kind of experience, go ahead and just use some dikes or 
pliers and just go ahead and cut it. Let's see if we can pull it out here. Just like that. And now you've got a castle nut here on the bottom. Oh my God, look at this play, guys. Wild. One of the worst outer tie rods I've ever felt. And if you wonder why your steering wheel's off at an angle for no reason, and that there's a little slack when you go to turn in one direction, this is it, guys. This attaches right to your steering system. So these are responsible for steering the wheels, and if there's too much play here, as in this example, it'll mess your feeling up. We're gonna get an awesome steering feel when we get this all back together. I'm super pumped. So let's go ahead and loosen this castle nut. On this car, it is 18 millimeter. Yeah, there we go. Woo! Sometimes it takes a little power to get those off. Save your castle nut. If you're using an OEM replacement, in this case, it is coming with a new nut to hold it on there, so I won't be use, reusing those, but if yours doesn't come with that, it's always good to hold on to stuff. And as you can see, you can't lift the outer tie rod straight out. The other thing to remember too is, yeah, you're really gonna be tempted to just hammer this thing straight through. You can get in a lot of trouble. If you bend this and you can't pull it up through the knuckle afterwards, you have just screwed yourself in a very serious way. So go ahead, there's a lot of uh, pitman arms and pickle forks and things you can use. These work great. So get yourself a kit, they're pretty cheap. Also, alternatively, you can go to a local parts store and they'll rent it to you for basically free. The idea behind this is very simple. You're just gonna wedge it here between the uh, knuckle and the outer tie rod. Use the hammer to tap it into place. And what that'll do is create that separation. Just like that, guys. Super awesome. Did what it was intended to do. Here's our outer tie rod. And it should just screw right off. That's why that nut's gonna stay there to mark our alignment point. I mean, look at this. <laughs> Uh, I felt them before like this in cars that are way past their due. These can get noisy when they fail and sometimes they won't. Look at them. Sorry about the dramatic uh, reaction there, but this female black widow just came. Pretty good sized female there. Just seriously dropped down right outside of where my hand is, maybe a few inches away. So, oh my God. You can see the red hourglass right there. This is it, man, I'm telling you. I love these California rust-free cars, but boy, if they've sat for any period of time, they get these widows in them. Oh, I think that's the last one though, jeez. All right, sorry for the reaction. One thing I'm scared of, guys, spiders. Especially the uh, poisonous kind. Installation is pretty much just uh, the opposite of what we did before. Let's go ahead and take this outer tie rod and connect it to the inner tie rod. Nice and easy does it. Gonna go all the way to that nut is and then we're gonna actually back it up about a quarter to a half a turn uh, because we had to loosen that nut and that'll get us pretty dang close to our alignment. Okay, so just back a little. That'll be perfect. You move the knuckle to make it drop in nice and smooth. Get it back in its nice little house there. And then we're gonna go ahead and replace that castle nut. Or if yours came in a new one, go ahead and install the new one at this time. Nice and tight. And you are good. Now, I still recommend, I bet we're gonna be pretty damn close uh, to the alignment that was on the car before, but I still always recommend getting yourself a proper alignment after a job like this. Time to do the same job on the passenger side. 